Hey, this is Matt. Once again, what about to end the video? This is another paid request, this time for Julie. Thank you so much for that. Sorry, I'm putting the paper here so that I'm not messing around with my phone to remember what the list is. But thanks once again, Julie. Thank you all for out there for the requests. I really appreciate it. For those interested in requesting pretty much any type of reviews or a list or a ranking or a topic or a reaction or a commentary or a re review or pretty much anything. Feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both things are down below in the info box. And this is a list that Julie wanted to ask on my top 10 favorite films of 1976. Because I think mentioned the date of birth was 1976 for our requester here. So thank you for that. And to be honest, it was a bit hard. Because I realized I haven't seen a lot of films that came out in 76, but I was able to come up with 10. These last three could be switched around, so 10 could be 9, or 8 could be 9, or 8 could be 10, but this is how I'm going to put them right now. <coughs> Sorry. 10, King Kong. I don't mind the film. I don't mind the old school effects. Rick Baker had a hand in that. You have Jeff Bridges, you got Charles Grodin. Like I said, don't mind it for what it is. It's not as classic as the 30s film. And it's not as fun and exciting as Tonstall Island. This is an alright, you know, average, I didn't mind it. Decent musical score. Always cool to see Jeff Bridges in there. Like I said, the Rick Baker effects are, have a little bit of a charm to them. Um, Sally, there's not a whole lot of Team Con fighting other monsters and stuff. It's really more about him versus the humans. So it's like, okay, the, that's the difference they made, but it took a little bit of the fun out of you know, Team Con you know, fighting dinosaurs or all sorts of other creatures. It wasn't, just wasn't that movie. But I guess on the flip side, made it a little bit more of its own thing. At least they didn't have Team Con dancing on the f damn ice, like the fucking ice capades, like Peter Jackson's film. And it wasn't three hours long, or over three hours long, like Peter Jackson's film was. So I'll take over that piece of crap. Yes, I do think Peter Jackson's Team Con's piece of crap is way too long. It takes an hour just to get to the damn island, and even then, it's not like the characters were established that well. You may say they're established, but I don't think they're established well. Jack Black was miscast. He was just irritating. Anyway, I'll take Charles Grodin and Jeff Bridges and no dancing on the ice queen. I'll, I'll watch this one more. Number nine, Carrie. Never been my favorite Stephen King film, but I do think it's well done for what it needs to be. I definitely do think it's the best version of Carrie we've had. Sissy Spacek, very easy to feel sorry for. You really do get a sense of her being just completely bullied and psychologically more and more damaged as the movie goes along. And I don't know why it's not one of my... It's, it's not the really... For the film per se, just for some reason, just never been a film I rewatch a lot. But Brian De Palma, very solid direction with the finale, with the split screens as she's showing her power. I think it's very effective. Uh, early appearance by John Travolta, as well as Nancy Allen. And apparently one of the cats, they... <laughs> they're a big John Travolta fan. Sorry, I don't have Saturday Night Fever. Maybe they, or maybe a big fan of Grease. <clears throat> Grease, it's the wood, it's the wood, it's the motion. Sorry, Cat, I'm not talking about Grease. Maybe you're eating some Grease, and you're thinking of Grease. It's not Grease. But yeah, carry effective wouldn't need to be... I, I don't remember what all was in it that wasn't in the novel. I can't remember for certain. I think they tried to put a little bit of that in the remake. But, well, there's been more than one remake, but the theatrical remake, which I, I don't know, I, I couldn't really get into. 
didn't really care about the one. I didn't think they had the visceral effectiveness as this one did, and the, the direction. And then they tried to add like more CGI in the finale. But yeah, I, Terry's a good one. Number eight, Logan's Run. Didn't grow up with the film, but I remember seeing it and liking the creativity of the environments and uh, stars Michael York as a guy who part of this culture that when you're 30 you have to supposedly you can't live any longer and all this other stuff going on so you have to go into an area to have yourself terminator, terminated there are people that run and Michael Yours Teared is one of those officers that have to chase after the people that are a runner but now with him they have this dial on their hand that shows when their time's up and he makes a run for it. Been a while since I've seen it, so I don't know all the details in particular, but I do remember not minding the film. And <laughs> this cat being pissed that I don't like. I didn't say I hated Logan's Run. I said I didn't remember it, Cat. Shut up. But number seven is Silver Street. Silver Street is the first time that Richard Pryor and Gene Wilder got to work together. And while I don't think it's as effective, my favorite is See No Evil, Hear No Evil. Uh, Silver Street, it's entertaining when Richard Pryor comes into play. The bad thing is that Richard Pryor doesn't come into play till much later in the film. And then their section is glorious. It shows they had a wonderful chemistry with each other. Then Richard Pryor disappears, which is sad, but when he comes back to the finale, such a great joy. And that's the thing. The, the first chunk of the film is Gene Wilder on a train. There's a little bit of comedic murder mystery, and it's alright. Gene Wilder is a good performer. Willy Wonder in the Chocolate Factory, Blazing Saddles, among others. And it's fun for what it is. Gene Wilder helps that a lot. But just when Richard Pryor comes in, it makes it go, man, they should have a whole film together where Stir Crazy and See No Evil, Hear No Evil did. But yeah, it's just, the reason it's lower on the list, if Richard Pryor was in the film more, it would be higher on the list. That's the film where I guess technically you'd have Gene Wilder and Blackface and Richard Pryor trying to teach him how to act black, which wouldn't fly in today's age. But uh, the way Richard Pryor works with Gene Wilder, it makes the film fairly entertaining. <laughs> and you definitely felt that Richard Pryor entered, and I'm a big fan of Richard Pryor, Bust and Lose. You see No Evil, Hear No Evil, which I have the Blu-ray right there, is my favorite. But, this is still an entertaining one. I think the same director who got to direct See No Evil, Hear No Evil, I believe is the same person. So, I, yeah, I remember that being fun. Number six, Taxi Driver, Martin Scorsese classic. Robert De Niro playing this guy that wants to clean the streets up. In his mind. Uh, they show sort of the darker edges of vigilanteism. And in his mind, it's the right way to do it. But in a way, he accomplishes what he wants. And he gets the f popularity, the congratulations. Even though technically he's not a guy who deserves it. Because he's a, he's a guy that kind of like Joker where, yeah, he ended up saving this girl at the end, but you don't quite know who this person is, and that could have easily been to some innocent people, like, at a point he wanted to kill, like, a politician, senator or something. It has been a while since I've seen Taxi Driver. But it really captures the, I do remember capturing the grit of the streets, and I thought Robert De Niro... Did a really good job. I believe uh, you also have Sybil Shepherd in it. Jodie Foster, very young, early role from her. Harvey Keitel being in the film. Very nicely directed by Martin Scorsese. 
Uh, my favorite Scorsese film is probably The Wolf of Wall Street. I do like After Hours. I do like Taxi Driver. But Goodfellas is a good one. Rest in peace, Ray Liotta. Of course, the famous, you talk to me? You talk to me? I don't see anybody here. You talk to me? And then by the end of the film, you get the idea that this rage is going to bubble up once again. But how is it going to be unleashed this time? Could it be on something much more of a darker sentiment? You don't know. But you know, sooner or later, it's probably going to happen again. As the, cle as the streets become unclean yet again. But, I mean, definitely, who hasn't seen Taxi Driver? And if you haven't, go see Taxi Driver. Number five, The Enforcer. I'm a big Dirty Harry fan. Uh, Madden Enforcer is my favorite. Then The Deadpool. Then Set an Impact. Then The Enforcer. Then The First Dirty Harry. But I do like all five of them. But just that uh, Madden Enforcer is my favorite. I do like The Enforcer. I always liked it in Dirty Harry films where you have the main plot. Especially for a lot of the Dirty Harry sequels. You have a main plot going on with the bad guys or the antagonists. But then you also have Dirty Harry over here doing his job. Going these little in and out action scenes, set pieces. That's part of his job. You see that more so in bits of Man and Force and the Deadpool and, and uh, Sudden Impact. Until ultimately he gets caught up with the main story. Which in here is these sort of militant guys. Ultimately they're going to kidnap an important person and want money. This is where Dirty Harry joins up with Tyne Daly. Oh, she's a woman, this and that. But she holds her own. Turns out to be a very capable partner for Dirty Harry Callahan. Yeah, a little bit of bazooka, fa bazooka fun. Bazooka foo. Especially in the finale. The bad guys, the, the villains were never... I mean, they're not as interested to me compared to the... Vigilante cops and Madden Force or the crazed... He wasn't a director, but he was part of a film crew in the Deadpool. But still, you get some decent bits of action. Clint Eastwood on his A-game. I don't really have a lot of other big issues to it. Tyne Daly is a good support for Clint Eastwood in that. The Enforcer, is, I think, is a fun, worthy sequel. But yeah, I, the Mad Enforcer I like more, but... I thought there was another decent one. Because that's the one that came out after Man and Force. So it would be Dirty Harry Part 3. So yeah, I don't mind it. I liked it. Number 4, Grizzly. Yes, it's a take on Jaws. But I think it's a very fun one. Only this time it's about Killer Bear. It is on Blu-ray. I do want to pick up the Blu-ray sometime. See if it looks better than the DVD. Yeah, Christopher George, may rest in peace. Andrew Prine, Richard Jaco. Christopher George is the, I was going to say cop, but that's Roy Scheider. But he's the official. There's killings going on. Of course, no, we can't close this down. It, it follows the Jaws formula. <laughs> Richard Jaco is the hunter. Andrew Prine, I guess you would call him sort of the... Well, I don't know. Would you call Richard Jaco? Maybe he's the. Maybe Richard Jaco would be the Richard Dreyfus part, and Andrew Prime would be the Robert Shaw of the group. I guess so. Just like Richard Jaco is more of an expert. But it's a very capable cast. I think for the time, the Grizzly stuff looks fine, looks fun. I think for what they were able to do. You do get some violent bits, including a little kid get fucked up, and that little kid get fucked up badly. <laughs> Pretty much like 
it is what you want out of a killer bear movie. It's at times violent. It follows a tried and true formula. Christopher George is very likable as the lead. You really feel for the character. You stick behind him through this bullshit red tape that he's got to go through. They do actual shots of a bear. The up close so that it doesn't hurt the actors. They have your claws and eating bloody wounds, bloody marks. Then little kid, even little kid gets fucked up. Bear don't give a shit. Just like little kid gets fucked up in Jaws. Sharks don't give a shit. Bears don't give a shit. Only PCs give a shit. <clears throat> but, I mean, fuck. The bear gets killed by a fucking bazooka at the end. How many movies do we see where the hero blasts his shell of a bear with a bazooka? It's just my cup of tea of a movie. That nature gone amok type of film. So yeah, Grizzly I enjoy. That's number four. Number three, Rocky. I mean, it's not my favorite Rocky film. That's four, part four, and then part three. And then four, three, two... Well, no, four, three, Balboa, then two, then one, then five. But I mean, it's the movie that started it all. Started Stallone's career, Oscar winning, huge box office, star of the franchise that is still going because you have Creed films now. Well, I mean, what more can we say about Rocky? The million to one shot, much more of a drama, a bit of sports in it. Definitely has a different... It does have... It has a different feel compared to what the sequels would be. Some would say for the worse. I mean, I always thought Rocky 2 was better than Rocky 1. But, uh, that's just me. But, I mean, very worthy movie. Stallone does a wonderful job. This really stinks! Burgess Meredith, Carl Weathers, great score about Bill Conti, good love story between Rocky and Adrian. You lose your hat. I love you. Perfect way to end it. Rousing score, freeze frame, wonderful idea by the director, may he rest in peace, John G. Alvinson, who go on to direct The Karate Kid, a couple, like the first three Karate Kid films, and then Rocky V. Rocky's a classic. I mean, Rocky... You should almost say, enough said. It's Rocky. Come on now. And I'm a Stallone fan. Of course I like Rocky. The underdog, easy to root for. There are still people pissed that it won the Oscar. What the fuck, you know, Rage Bull, Taxi Driver, you know, all this stuff. Whatever. I like Rocky more than them. Well, Roger Bull never won an Oscar. Won if I, I don't care. I like Rocky more. I like Rocky more than Roy. I've never been a Raging Bull fan. Never have been. Taxi Driver I like. Never been in a Raging Bull. Just not for me. I'm more into Rocky. Number two, All the President's Men. Robert Redford, Dus uh, Dustin Hoffman. I don't know if this film is on Blu-ray. If so, I have to pick it up. But yeah, I don't know if this film's on Blu-ray. I have to look. Very engaging mystery. I mean, it's Watergate, so you know what it is. But it was just interesting to see how these two reporters get from point A to point B to point Z during this investigation, showing the ins and outs of the newspaper, who they talk to, sort of the tension of, uh, you tell us some info, and they want to tell but they don't want to tell are they being followed are they being bugged wait this is how high this goes up in power realizing just how far it goes and are they being watched and will they be killed and I thought it has a lot of good tension it's well directed it's very well paced I think Robert Redford and Dustin Hoffman give wonderful performances and I think it's a very solid drama bit of a thriller very much worth a look if you've never seen it. Love All the President's Men. Excellent movie. 
I was seeing if Injustice for All came out this year, but I don't think it did. I think they came out year after. So, because I love Injustice for All with Al Pacino, but I don't think that came out this year. I don't think so. If it did, I would put it high up on the list, but I don't think it did. But yeah, number one, easily Assault in Prison 13. Love Assault in Prison 13. One of my favorite John Carpenter films. Although in the film, there's a little nitpick. I hate the fact that it's Precinct 9 Division 13. And it's on a radio, so I don't know why you didn't just change it. I don't know, with a dub or something. You could have dubbed that in, because again, it's a radio. So why not say, okay, let's fix that. But it's never been fixed. That just bugs me. It's called Assault and Precinct 13, but it's Precinct 9 Division 13. With that said, creates a very eerie atmosphere in a way, which is the villains. This is a case where not knowing the villains actually works in its favor, because it becomes almost an ongoing onslaught, like a zombie movie. And you don't know how many there are and what's left, and they're just assaulting the station. The actors, Austin Stoker as our lead. Darren Jostin as our villain Napoleon. What are they calling Napoleon? If we live through this, I'll tell you. And those two worked very well together. Um, you want to talk about progressive? Great change of pace that the lead is black. And he's just a guy. Kind of just doing his job. And he may be a little bit over his head. But he's able to take charge. And through his morality and his cool-headed nature get through the situation the the lady I forget her name she's tough she takes a fucking bull in the arm and now ooh, it doesn't crumble it's ballsy I mean there's a scene where little kid wants her ice cream and it shows how vicious these villains are just kills the kid right through her damn ice cream cone fuck let her eat her ice cream at least The action is hard hitting. The score is fantastic. I love the music in this. Love the theme. Easily one of my favorite John Carpenter films. It may be number three. The theme, Big Trouble, Big Trouble in Little China. I think A Song Preacher 13 will be number three. Because there's also In the Mouth of Madness, Tiff in New York. Yeah, A Song will be number three. And John Carpenter is like my favorite director. I love the way with him and the cinematographer, the widescreen, the way that's used, and the camera work, and just it creates this eerie feeling of, you know, they're in a city, they still feel like they're in the middle of nowhere. Of course, it's John Carpenter's take on the John Wayne film, Rio Bravo, among other movies. It's a western, but it's a modern take on it. But yeah, I love Assault on Prison 13. Love the film. We'll love to see what it looks like on 4K. But, I think there is a 4K, but I, maybe one day I'll pick it up. But yeah, also on Prison 13, I absolutely adore. The remake! <sighs> to be fair, <clears throat> it's not an awful film, if I'm being fair. It's just unneeded. It's more tolerable than the remake of The Fog, the prequel to The Thing, the remake of Halloween. <sighs> what the hell else was there a remake of? The Fog, you know, all this. But it, it just. You watch, you know, this still felt unneeded. I still don't feel the purpose of this film. I mean, this film could have been called anything. It was just called Song Prison 13, so that. John Carver wouldn't sue him like he sued the guys who did Lockout for being too much like Steve in New York. And I think he won that. But, yeah, Solemn Prison 13, number one. All the President's Men, number two. Rocky, number three. Grizzly, number four. Enforcer, number five. Taxi Driver, number six. Silver Street, number seven. Logan's Run, number eight. Terry, number nine. And Team Con, number ten. So, with that said, thanks for watching. Take care. And we will see you guys later. Bye-bye.